I'm going to quote to you from the Epic Times. It says, a man who made a living developing fraud detection algorithms has discovered a curious phenomenon. Counties that started using Dominion voting system machines have on average moved by two to three points to the Democrat presidential candidate from the Republican compared to counties that didn't adopt the machines. The difference persisted even after he controlled for a number of factors, including the county population and various demographic characteristics. I recommend we audit the machines, he concluded. The man is Ben Turner. He used to be the chief actuary at Texas Mutual Workers Compensation Insurance. He now runs Fraud Spotters, a consultancy specializing in detecting insurance fraud. The Epix Times replicated his initial analysis using the same data that he used and arrived at the exact same results. Ben Turner and the other statisticians, they're not alone. In fact, they corroborate the concerns of our white hat hacker that we referred to as Jekyll. We featured him obscured with altered voice in episode 21, almost two years ago. But now he's coming out of the shadows for the first time ever here in the economic war room. Welcome Josh Merritt. Josh, thank you for your service. We worked hard to protect your identity when you appeared on our show before, but someone on the legal team accidentally exposed your name and that set off a firestorm of media. And one, one contacted you and that was the Washington Post. And I apologize to you for the way that they treated you. You served our nation and were honorably discharged. The Washington Post seemed only interested in your training and things related to you personally. They didn't seem at all interested in what you found. It's like your dog finds a dead body in the backyard, and when the police come, you tell them, well, you know, this dog never finished obedience school, and on top of that, he has fleas. But they found a dead body. Josh, tell us, what did you find? Well, so starting back in 2018, when we started looking at the systems and we started looking at their cyber infrastructure, uh, we found that a lot of, even within the manuals, we found that a lot of the election systems were created in order to be manipulated. Uh, and yep. we'd actually gotten a hold of some of the server logs from the 2018 midterm election in Dallas. And we saw manipulation that we've now confirmed in 2020, where we we're seeing timestamp mismatch errors, where a server was communicating outside of the United States uh, back into the system. We were seeing votes that were removed vote counts that were being zeroed out. Uh, and these are systems from other election companies. Then with uh, one specific election company, we found that their voter uh, rosters were completely open to the, the internet. And on the 2020 elections, we got confirmed that that was a target because on October 30th, uh, CISA, in a joint memo with the FBI, had put out a memo that stated um, that they saw Iranian APT teams going after election companies for the sole purpose of going after the voter rolls, even though Chris Krebs had come out and said that it was the most secure election in U.S. history. But days prior, CISA had said, no, we see bad guys getting into the system. I recall that you said that every one of those voting machines can be hacked and that most of the machines had their security features turned off and their admin info was pretty easy to find on the dark web. Is that true? Yes, exactly. And then we found some uh, on the 2020 election, I even found scarier places that it was hidden. Uh, websites where uh, there was no IP address within the, the DNS server. So it actually went deeper than than the deep web or Tor, it went into what everybody sort of calls the, the Marianas web, where you have this secret net where people were trading uh, voting software in the quiet that no one could see. Thanks, Josh.